Well, this uh, video is uh, kind of an odd one. The picture you're staring at is my Mark II Jaguar when it landed in a merry car. And uh, the next picture that follows this will be uh, it in its current state. However, the reason for me uh, recording this audio prior to you getting into uh, the rather lengthy pictures of uh, the E-Type, the E-Type being my E-Type and my brother's E-Type. Um, he will explain what happened uh, and uh, the recording um, will highlight some of the fun um, with getting an E-Type and getting it to where we got it and the fun we had doing it. Um, my Mark II currently is, uh, as you can see, um, progressing nicely. However, there is an issue with the front grille. Um, it doesn't fit correctly and the body shop are going to have to take my baby back and modify it to make it fit correctly. That's called shit happens. They're fixing it. There's no problem. They're, they're good guys. They appreciate that they didn't get it right. And that's where um, they are a good body shop. They will fix it. And I'm extremely happy about that because I wasn't happy about the, uh, the end result. And in fairness to them, it's not a vehicle they've worked on. So... Without further ado, let's move on and uh, let you stare at this picture. And then my brother will leap into action and give you his um, video. Hope you enjoy it. Hello, everyone. I'm Trevor. Gary, who makes these videos, is my baby brother. And we are the two brothers who bought this car. It is a 1964 Jaguar 3.8 litre E-Type fixed head coupe. It was less than 20 years old when we bought it. And it looked, as you can see, it looks like it had a pretty hard life. As we stripped off all the paint and took off all the pieces, we discovered that it was actually in pretty worse condition than we had thought. After a couple of years working on this, I had to leave for the USA. So I gave Gary my credit card in order to help him finish the restoration. By 1990, the car looked like this. Pretty nice, isn't it? Then Gary decided he wanted to come to the United States as well, so in 1996 over he came with this car and his Mark II. I took custody of this car and drove it around myself for a fairly long time. Eventually, however, it was getting a little tatty, so in 2007 I had it repainted. The colour I chose was a Jaguar colour from 2002 called Emerald Green Metallic. I put it back together and drove it myself for another few years before deciding that I needed to get the rest of the car up to scratch too. To this end I put in electronic ignition, better brakes, better cooling fan and a five-speed Tremec gearbox. This year I turned my attention to the interior. It's originally biscuit, but I've taken that all out now, lined the interior with soundproofing and started looking at the seats. Both seats look much like this. Not too bad a condition, but once I started taking them apart, things went downhill very fast. 
the center section of the back of the seat comes out very easily just a single screw but as you can see once I looked inside it the uh, elastic that holds the foam in place was completely rotted away. Pulling up the seat squab and looking underneath it told a very similar story. The elastic was kind of tatty and if you look at the steel bar that holds the seat together it's getting rather rusty. Looking into the base of the seat where it bolts down to the car itself you can see that one of the bolt holes has disappeared completely and there is just a large rusty hole there. This picture and the next one show the wooden tack strips that are attached to the metal frame of the seat so that the covering of the seat can be stapled to it. This is the view from the bottom of the seat. The tack strips go all around it so that the leather can be stapled securely to it. Here is a view of the one-time bolt hole. From underneath you can see where the reinforcing plate has disappeared and the rest of the hole has just rusted away. The paint, which by the way is hammerite, uh, sort of UK equal to Paw 15 is looking rather ripply and not very smooth in this picture. After removing the tack strips I could see that there were some rust holes along the back edge between the base of the seat and its back so I tackled that first and this is what I found a whole load of filler Bondo, whatever you like to call it. I scraped and gouged it all out until I found this. There is very little metal left along the edge between the back and the base of the seat. Here is a closer look at what I found. And there were holes along the side edges too. By the time I had finished stripping the seat, I had found holes, rust holes, all over it. Here's a view of the entire bottom of the seat. You can see holes all the way around. Some of them are supposed to be there, but most of them are not. Here is the back of the seat. You can see plenty of rust holes here. but this is the edge that really condemned it. The next couple of pictures you will see just the extent of the gap between the back of the seat and the base of the seat. I decided the seat could not be saved and I don't think that the other seat is going to be very much better. So I have ordered two new seat frames from SNG Barrett. Not the uh, aluminium ones, the steel ones. The aluminium ones were thousand, over a thousand dollars a piece. These steel ones are a little over three hundred a piece, which I didn't think was too bad. They're being sent directly to uh, the Jaguar interior upholsterer that I am using to have the seats made. Although the seats will no longer be used in the car, 
I don't think their life is over yet because I have a plan to turn them into office chairs. So thank you for, thank you for watching this set of slides. Hopefully there will be some more later as I progress with the car. So it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Gary, or as we say in England, TTFN.